This is Deconstructing Dallas. We have Doug Newby here who has given us a little bit of his time to give us some of his extensive knowledge on Dallas neighborhoods and how our city has come together. We talked a little bit about Trinity Groves, and I guess one of the things that is making news um, across the country is Amazon and their what is being called HQ2, their second headquarters location, and they've announced a number of finalists across the country who are in the running to be a, a, a part of that headquarters too. And so Trinity Groves has been announced as potentially a location and as a site. And you talk about this in your blog about why Trinity Groves would be a good location for the Amazon HQ2. Can you kind of share a little bit with the folks who we are directing to your blog uh, because it has so much good information, but can you kind of talk a little bit about why you think uh, that Trinity Groves is a good location? Well, it's interesting. Most of the cities competing are talking about the demographics and the size and how many universities and housing prices and all the technical things. And and I was thinking, would this be a good fit for Amazon? Would the Amazon employees enjoy being in Dallas? Would Dallas enjoy having the Amazon employees? And the more I thought about it, I go, this is really a fabulous opportunity, not just for Dallas, but even a better opportunity for Amazon because they have a space where they can create an identity, where they can grow, and they can impact Dallas without dominating Dallas. The Dallas is an open city that absorbs people and new ideas. And Amazon has a lot of great ideas and they'll have a lot of new people. And and I thought... Well, here, here is a location, a site, where you have diverse neighborhoods. And I say diverse in the sense of people from all over the country that have moved to Dallas and made it their home, but also different styles and interests and all these things that are within walking or biking distance. And so they'll be welcome as new residents of Dallas and Dallas will be eager to see how they contribute, not to the tax base, but for their ideas, how they uh, contribute to autonomous transportation or maybe to the hardwood forest or any other things they have an interest in. Well, Doug, we know you're you're a real estate guy, and so I've got a, a, a bit of a curveball here. We get the pleasure of working with one of our fine clients, uh, Walmart from time to time. And uh, so what the one thing that I think that Walmart has is they are in a lot of neighborhoods in the DFW metro area. Do you think that part of this pitch is a from a competition standpoint would be to have a real estate brick and mortar, not necessarily a storefront, but have a footprint in a really critical market for one of their competitors? Well, this is this is one of the things I think is great about Dallas is that Dallas breeds competition within a platform of cooperation. And I think that Dallas has so many different industries and competing interests. It's kind of like, you know, four gas stations on the four corners of a road or intersecting roads always do better than isolated yeah. gasoline stations. So I think that there's a vibrancy that you get with cooperation and competition in a city like Dallas. I absolutely agree. We, we've talked about it before, all the innovative stuff that Walmart's doing and, you know, in communities and stuff. I absolutely agree that you know, co- uh, you know, high water level raises all boats. And so I think that it, it not only you know, helps the people of Dallas, I think it helps everybody to get better. So it's an interesting point and a point well taken. And when I say an open city, when you think about the other cities they're considering, these employees, the majority of them that make under $100,000 a year, they're not going to get a seat at the dinner table in Washington, D.C., but they do have the opportunity to get a seat at the dinner table of any one of many influential and innovative people in Dallas. I, I think that's absolutely. We we can both attest to that as natives of Albuquerque, New Mexico, with my co-host Ryan Trimble in Paris, <laughs> Texas, myself. That you can come to Dallas and and make it your own. And if you have ideas, if you have dreams, I think Mayor Rollins tells kind of a similar story sure. of being able to to make an impact when you come here. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been fun to 
uh, you know, get here in 2001 and just be a part of watching this city grow up. So it's, it's been fun for me personally. One, one thing that you talked about and kind of getting into the, I guess, kind of nitty gritty of how development and things work. But you talked about how because the the folks who are building out, I'll even say uh, Trinity Groves are not your traditional developers, then they are not hindered by some of the conventional wisdom and the tra- and, and the traditional thinking of developers in, in having built out a site like Trinity Groves. Can you talk about, Doug, what, you, what that means to you as far as how this is different, as far as how it has been put together versus other more traditional developments? Well, this is one of the things I was so excited about, is you have a couple of fellows that have been innovators in several other industries. So this isn't, they say, well, we have a new idea how to develop things. Their whole business career, they've been creators. They've been innovators. And they're, they're saying, how can we contribute to Dallas? How can we connect with Dallas? And how can we attract the best Corporation or corporations in the world to come to here to this spot? And how can we help move the center of Dallas across the river? And they have more land than the Arts District. They have more land than what we think of the traditional downtown Dallas. So all of a sudden, between the Honorable Ron Kirk Bridge <laughs> and the Calatrava Bridge and the, or the, or the Margaret Hunt and Margaret McDermott Bridges, Dallas no longer is separated by a river, but it's connected by a river. It's connected by a park. It all becomes one, one downtown Dallas and one neighborhood. So whether you're at SMU and riding your bike or whether you're at Bishop's Arts or if, if you're pregnant and you need to ride a couple of uh, miles to live your baby at uh, Clements Center. You can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Doug, we uh, certainly appreciate you coming on. Do you have any? Uh, we, we always like to give our guests an opportunity to uh, provide our listeners with a cheap plug, as I like to say. So, <laughs> well, my, my plug and the reason I'm here is because I'm an enthusiast of Dallas. I love watching this positive evolution, and and like to do my little part in contributing. To that positive direction that I've experienced the entire time I've been here. And and with that, we still want to make sure we let everybody know how to find you on your blog. Well, it's, it's Dallas Architecture Blog and Architecturally Significant Homes is my website. I also, I think you might enjoy seeing my TEDx talk, Homes That Make Us Happy. And that is that on YouTube? Yes. Okay, cool. Well, we have really thoroughly enjoyed this, and hopefully there will be more news down the road that we can talk to you about, Doug. But as it relates to today's conversation, this has been very inspiring, and we really appreciate you coming in to talk to us today. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. Appreciate it. Great work. We'll be back after this short break. Thanks for listening. Constructing Dallas. I am Sean Williams with Ryan Trimble. Man, that was a great conversation with Doug Newby. Man, Doug Newby, that guy just makes you feel comfortable, warm, happy. Yeah, like I'm smiling. I found myself smiling the whole time he was talking. Same here. Same here. I mean, I'm excited to be in Dallas just after listening to him talk about it. I would anticipate that over the run of, of the time that we plan to do this podcast, that we might have an opportunity or a need to talk to Doug once again, just because he can like brighten up our office space here. So that might be just a reason in and of itself to invite him back. Doug, you are welcome in the Allen Media Worldwide Headquarters Studios anytime. So we didn't really talk about this in our opening segment, or but... The Amazon HQ search is a real thing, and Trinity Groves is a spot that is being considered. And, you know, Doug made some really good points, not only in our conversation here, but on his blog about why Trinity Groves should be a a, a major player as far as the HQ2 goes. 
Yeah, I mean, you look at all the amenities he noted, and if you go back and read his his blog, DallasArchitectureBlog.com, uh, his article about this, I mean, it is amazing just how close everything is to that, that site. And so, uh, you know, to me, it checks a lot of the boxes that I would think that the search committee or uh, Mr. Bezos or whoever's making the ultimate decision – yeah, it checks a lot of the boxes that they're looking for. And because of all of the Fortune 500 companies in the area, because of the the presence of so many great businesses, it is. I think it is important that Amazon could come here and be part of, you know, just the business community yeah. at whole where we got Toyota that just came to Two town. Two international and, airports. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it would become one of many big fun, exciting corporations and places to work. I was reading a publication, excuse me, for not having the data on me that listed Dallas as the number one place to work. Uh, so, I mean, I, th- I think that would make for a great place for Dallas. But again, you know, there's apparently a, a little ways to go in this and no one wants to get ahead of themselves. But I yeah. think, again, as a person who lives close to Trinity Groves and then being a client is exciting to kind of hear Doug's perspective on why he thinks that's a, a cool location. Yeah, and, and congratulations and thanks to, to the to the folks down at Trinity Groves for all your hard work and, and just making this a cool place to be. So, uh, you know, that, that was a pleasure to, to get his perspective and uh, look forward to hearing much more. And if you are hearing about Trinity Groves and you have not been there, you need to go. As Doug said, it's not hard. You can get on your car. You can get on your bike. Uh, you can take a, a, a vehicle down with ride share, however you want to do that. Uh, you know, take bike, bike share, share. Take OFO. <laughs> why not? Um, and, and, and get over and check out some of the great restaurant concepts that they have, cr- the, some of the great desserts. If you want Mexican food, Italian food, uh, there are all sorts of options at Trinity Groves. So I would advise anyone, if they're looking for something to do week night week end to check out trinity groves sounds like plan sean let's do this again next week we took a week off for spring break uh we didn't get much in the spring break talk but that would probably be a, a whole nother podcast maybe we can do like a uh like after five podcast one day where we can get into <laughs> yeah. our, our because we both had pretty cool vacation stories so maybe that'll be its own deal when we if we can find some time because i know you share the sentiment that we have been slammed today we have been busy but uh we are glad that we could uh, bring this podcast to you. Well, thank you for listening. Please download wherever you get your podcast. Like, subscribe. We are finding that folks are listening. We are finding that folks like what we're talking about, but we need more. We are greedy. So please share this podcast with your friends. Thank you so much to Jennifer Pascal. Thank you so much to Mary Woodleaf here at Allen Media. Thanks for Doug Newby for coming in and dropping some knowledge about Dallas neighborhoods. This is Deconstructing Dallas. We look forward to chatting with you again next week. Adios. Adios.